G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. The Aqua Reef 400 is one of the most popular tanks in Australia. They're particularly good as a beginner tank because they come with everything that you need to get started. However, they're also good for the more advanced reefer if you upgrade the componentry. People like to upgrade the lights, the water flow, the protein skimmer. But today, we're gonna to be looking at probably the biggest upgrade of them all, swapping out the sump. Let's have a look at the sump that the Aqua Reef 400 comes with. As you can see, it's a glass sump. We have a pre-filter area at the back where the water drains into. We've got a spot for the protein skimmer with these really skinny baffles between the two. There's very limited space to have a refugium style algae scrubber. And we've also got a small section for the return pump here, as well as a reservoir for your RO water. So it's quite a compact sump. Um, it does the job okay, but it's certainly something that you can benefit your system by upgrading. Now we also have this space to the right here. You could argue that this space would be a little bit wasted really. You can have most of the things uh, that people put here outside of the, the cabinet. Uh, and I definitely don't like to put the chiller in this area because it doesn't breathe very well. So today we're going to put an acrylic sump in the place of this glass one. That's going to be a better organized uh, sump and it's gonna take up pretty much the entire space under the cabinet. So let's check out the sump we're installing on this Aqua Reef 400. So this is our Homali acrylic sump and isn't it beautiful? It is effectively a large refugium style algae scrubber sump where this is going to be where the keto is. This is also where the water drains in from the tank. So the water drains in the back left here. There's no pre-filters, no filter socks or anything like that. Just a large refugium section. And you can see that there's actually a section for the light to sit in. Now this refugium or this sump is designed to accommodate a prime fuge. And the fact that we've got this section here where the prime fuge sits uh, and is entirely protected from water splash is really, really good. Now the water then moves through this baffle section here. This baffle is adjustable, so we can increase the height of the water in this section into this area here. Now this is the protein skimmer section. This has been designed to take a Ninos uh, 160, I think. And from here, the water moves across into our return pump section. Now the return pump for this system is a Vectra M2. And to start off with, we're just gonna be running it with soft hose through this section here, but in the future, we'll have bulkheads to really neaten it up. But today's challenge is all about getting the old sump out and the new sump in. So let's show you the process of doing that. Our return pump's just about to start sucking air. So we're going to turn that off. Just wait for it and we've used it to drain the sump as much as possible. And after it stops, there it goes. Okay. So now we're going to siphon the rest of, or as much of this water out of the sump as possible. Uh, of course, we want it to be as light as possible so that it's easy to remove. And we're trying to do as much of this as possible before we take this center uh, support upright out. Uh, we also have to drain the overflow um, from the tank so that uh, when we do take this plumbing apart, we don't have too much water splashing down and making a mess. So time to start siphoning water out of the sump. These protein skimmers that come with the Aqua Reef 400 are not particularly popular and they're probably one of the main reasons why people like to upgrade their sump so that they've got space for a bigger and better protein skimmer. Um, trying to fit a big good protein skimmer in this sump can be quite difficult. So definitely upgrading the skimmer on these systems is something that people like to do and this new sump is gonna make it really easy. So I've just drained out 
what I hope is the last of the water out of the overflow and we stop draining the tank down. So this is how much weight we're taking out of the tank to remove this support bar. So tell me in the comments if you think you would take the water further down than this to remove the support or if you think that's enough. We've completely stripped down the sump. I've just taken the return pump out now and we're ready to remove our upright. So it just has four filled head screws. I'm gonna take the screwdriver to it and uh, pull it out and as soon as we do that, we're going to rush to get this sump out and the new sump in. sump in place and now we just have to get the plumbing uh, hooked up. Our return or our drain line I should say is a little bit too long so we're going to have to cut a section out, put a sleeve over to join it back up again so that we've got the perfect length so that our drain feeds into the back section here. Um, but what we might do first is put this uh, front support back on. Okay. Now we have our support in, we can pump the water back in and we can take our time to finish off the sump. So we're making a bypass for our drainage line and what I'm doing is cutting out this section, it's about an inch and a half or so, um, and I'm just going to use a hacksaw. The reason I'm using the hacksaw instead of our normal pipe cutter is because this plumbing is quite brittle and we only have the one set of this, so if we stuff it up, we're in a lot of trouble. So the hacksaw is a safer option. And then we're gonna use our soft plastic CVT as a sleeve to join the two. All right, let's see how it fits. I'm gonna use hose clamps mm. just uh, to ensure that there's zero leaks, zero salt creep. All right, here goes. So, it needs to stay about five mil apart, I think. And now, just have to put the hose clamp on. Damn it! Ah, I knew I'd forget something. So I'm just gonna test that for length and we'll see if it fits. be the hardest part of the whole day. We've got a 25 mil barb and our hose is a 19 mil internal. So uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to stretch it over the barb. Uh, I've got the hose in this uh, cup of boiling water and just hope I can get it over. Without this uh, hose running, we don't have a return pump and we're in a lot of trouble. So let's see. Well, couldn't possibly have gone better. <laughs> that uh, has worked perfectly. So uh, there is no way that's coming off, but we'll probably put a little plastic ratchet over it just to be sure. But uh, I'm very happy that that worked. We've got heaps of uh, hose. I can probably cut a bit off, but I think I'll just start by feeding it up through. So as I said, we will be putting a bulkhead on the back of the sump just so it's a little bit neater but for now it's all about getting this system running with the new sump and we can take our time with everything else all right 
I definitely should have cut some of this hose off. I definitely don't need four meters of it. Okay, that's sitting beautifully. We are going to leave a little bit extra hose, but So our plumbing is uh, theoretically all put together. We can now finish filling the tank and uh, just putting all the equipment on and firing her up and checking for leaks. There you have it. We've completed our job of installing the new acrylic Kamali sump into our Aqua Reef 400. And isn't it beautiful? So as I started this video by saying, these Aquary 400s are really good setups and they're great for everyone from the absolute beginner to the more advanced reefer. And when you upgrade these systems with new light, new water flow, and especially a new acrylic sump, they really do make amazing reef systems. So that's our video on Gallery Aquatic TV for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!